Hey, how you doing? I'm Peter Hyatt, pastor of the Sanctuary Denver. Sometimes people ask me, hey man, like, uh, what do you believe? What do you believe really? Are you like uh, a universalist? And I have to say, I don't know. Uh, what's a universalist? Well, you know, a universalist believes that like all religions are just the same. So like, you know, whether it's Jesus or whatever, like Jesus, well, hey, it just doesn't really matter. Well, if that's a universalist, I'm definitely not a universalist. I believe that Jesus is the only thing that matters, that this was the plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him. In Christ, God was pleased to reconcile all things to himself, making peace by the blood of his cross. And he's the Lord of the universe. So if he decides to save the universe, then all the universe will be saved. Whoa, that's a different kind of universalism. What kind of universalism is that? Well, that universalism is actually four-point Calvinism. What's Calvinism? Well, John Calvin basically systematized most of the theology of the Reformation. His followers systematized his systematized theology in five points. The five points of Calvinism, total depravity, unmerited favor, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and the preservation of the saints. This first one, total depravity. Now that sounds pretty bad, but you have to ask, what are you depraved of? Well, you're depraved of your ability to choose the good. And you know, kind of every baby is depraved of their ability to choose the good, and yet you die for babies. They're incredibly valuable. And this is also the first point in every 12-step program, that you're incapable of choosing the good, the, the thing that you need to do. The second point is unmerited favor. That's a really nice way to say grace. And those two together, um, your inability to choose the good and, and grace, uh, those are the first two points of every 12-step program. The, the third point, this point, that's going to cause us some problems now. This is what we call limited atonement. It means that Jesus only died for some. This one is called uh, irresistible grace, the ip and to lip, the, the I, irresistible grace. It means that if God chooses to save you and you choose that like you don't want to be saved, which is the very problem, that's the thing you need to be saved from. Well, God's choice is stronger than your choice and his grace is irresistible. His grace is going to create faith in you. And then this last one, P, is the preservation of the saints. Tulip, it's pretty awesome if you're, uh, well, if you're one that's chosen. And pretty not awesome if you're not chosen or even love somebody that's not chosen. And aren't we supposed to love everybody? And if someone wasn't chosen, wouldn't they be the last and the least of these? Whatever the, we do, the last and the least of these we do to Jesus. So anyway, five points of Calvinism. And, and it's all pretty biblical except for this one. This is the problem one. Limited um, atonement. 1 John 2.2 2. He is the propitiation, atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the whole world. He died once for all, for, 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 for all of us. Total depravity. We cannot choose the good, unmerited favor. The good chooses us and not limited atonement, but limitless atonement. You, you know, atonement comes from the top of the Ark of the Covenant, the atonement seat, which is also the judgment seat. God's judgment is to atone for us and nothing is more powerful than God's judgment. And so, yes, irresistible grace. If he chooses to save us, then well, he will save us through his grace and he will create faith and he will uh, preserve us. So what does that mean? It means that in the beginning, God chose to make you in his own image and likeness. And he spoke a word, and that word will not return void. That word is Jesus. And through his death and resurrection, the demonstration of his grace, he creates faith. As long as you run from him, you will hide in the outer darkness. But when you come to him, you will become who it is that you truly are. And you will come to him because he is the beginning and the end of all things, including you.
So um, anyway, that's what I am. I'm what I call an F-bomb Calvinist. I'm like a universal Calvinist. <laughs>